In this video, we will talk about Chapter 18, uh, Nutrition and Metabolism. This will be one of the shorter, if not the shortest, chapter that we'll cover in this course. So this lecture won't actually take all that long. Uh, this chapter gets into more biochemistry than I would like to get into, so we'll keep that to a minimum. All right, first we'll go to all, or talk about uh, nutrients. Uh, of course, the body will require fuel as well as uh, other materials to help heal and grow and to develop. Uh, formal definition for nutrients. These are uh, chemical substances that are supplied by the environment through your diet that are required for survival. And there are two main classes of nutrients, macronutrients and micronutrients. Of course, macro means large, micro means small. Uh, macronutrients, these are what you need in bulk. So that's what the, uh, where the macro comes from macronutrients. You need a lot of them. These include the proteins and the carbohydrates and the lipids. The micronutrients are what are needed in the small amounts and what are included here the vitamins and minerals. And your, your body is fairly good at making what it needs to be able to help uh, grow and heal and so on but there's some things that the body can't make. There's some things that you have to get uh, from your diet and those things are called essential. An example of essential nutrients would be uh, amino acids. So there are eight essential amino acids. But things that your body can't make on its own, but you have to get from you know, an external source like your diet are called essential. All right, next we'll talk about uh, appetite control. Uh, the term metabolism will refer to the ways that the nutrients are, that you eat are altered and changed to support uh, cell function and the activities of life. Uh, definition for appetite is the drive that compels us to seek food. And appetite is actually controlled by uh, three interacting hormones that we'll cover. Uh, the first one, leptin. This is secreted by the fat cells, or the adipocytes, to help suppress appetite and increase the metabolic rate. This is uh, secreted when you have enough food and your appetite needs to be turned down so your body can process what you already have eaten. So it basically will make you less hungry, so the metabolic rate can go up, so your body can break down and process and do what it needs to, the food that you already have in your system right then. Uh, next one, uh, NPY, neuropeptide Y. Uh, this is created by the hypothalamus, uh, part of the brain, to increase appetite. And of course this would be inhibited uh, by leptin. So leptin will decrease appetite, NPY will increase appetite. And the third one here, ghrelin, this is secreted by uh, particular cells of the stomach. This will increase appetite by stimulating uh, NPY. All right. Here's a flow chart with all three of those uh, connected. Your normal appetite here. Whenever you fast, uh, those cells in your stomach will secrete ghrelin into the bloodstream. Ghrelin will stimulate the hypothalamus to secrete NPY, and that will increase your appetite back to normal levels. If we eat too much, then leptin will be secreted uh, by the fat cells. Uh, the leptin goes into your blood and that will inhibit MPY to uh, turn down your appetite. So leptin decreases appetite, MPY will increase appetite. All right, we'll talk about uh, carbohydrates here. Uh, carbs are the organic compounds that include all sugars and all starches. And a starch is really just a complex sugar. So any sugar is a carbohydrate. Anything that ends in O's, you know, sucrose, uh, glucose, lactose, and so on. All those are sugars. And the energy in these uh, chemical bonds are used to power most cellular uh, processes. Uh, where we get uh, cellular respiration. That's where that energy source comes from. Breaking down glucose into uh, pyruvate the whole, through the whole process of glycolysis. An example of a complex carbohydrate that humans can't break down is cellulose. Now cellulose is found within the cell walls of plants or plant cells. Now, even though we can't digest this as humans, this is what gives uh, bulk to your uh, intestines to help you uh, poop more often. This is what fiber is. That's why fiber makes you go to the bathroom more frequently. It adds bulk to the, uh, the feces as it's formed to help you go more often. Right, of course, carbohydrates can come from various sources. 
you know, uh, plant sources or animal sources and so on. But anytime you ingest any kind of carbohydrate, one of three things will happen to that carb. Uh, the first one, it will be used for uh, fuel for chemical reactions, such as cellular respiration. If it's not used right away, it will be stored as glycogen or can be converted into a fat. So one of these three things will happen to all carbs whenever you uh, digest or ingest them. All right, an example of some uh, carbohydrates, starch, and the sucrose, maltose, lactose. Uh, starch is broken down to its regular glucose, which is used for cellular respiration. Uh, sucrose, maltose, broken down and stored as glycolysis, or I'm sorry, uh, glycogen. And lactose will be turned into uh, fat. So glycogenesis, lipogenesis, or respiration. Those are one of the three possible outcomes for any carb that you uh, take in. All right, next we'll move on to lipids. These are the organic compounds that include you know, fats and oils, uh, cholesterol, and phospholipids, and so on. Now they supply energy for cellular processes and help to build structures like cell membranes. All cell membranes are are the the, the chain of uh, phospholipids end to end to end. And the most common type of lipid found in diets are called the triglycerides. They're called triglycerides because there are three fatty acid chains on each unit. Uh, triglycerides can either be saturated or unsaturated. And most people have heard of these terms, but they aren't sure what they really mean. So we'll go over what they actually mean here next. Uh, saturated fats, these come from animal sources. Uh, meat, uh, milk, eggs, and so on. And at room temperature, these are going to be solid, which is why they're not healthy. That's why uh, they're, well, they're called saturated because the carbon forms all single bonds. And I'll show you how that looks in a few slides. So these are the unhealthy ones and they're from animal sources. The unsaturated fats are found in plant origins. Uh, plant oils like canola oil, uh, olive oil, seeds, nuts, and so on. These are by far much more healthier than saturated. And what makes them unsaturated is there's at least one double carbon bond in that molecule. And that double bond will actually make the compound bend and kink. Here's how this looks. Uh, saturated, all these lines here represent a single carbon bond. When it's saturated like this, these are able to stack one on top of one another. So think of a, a deck of cards. When they do that, they're much more able to form a solid mass at room temperature. That's why these are not healthy. When they're unsaturated, you get this uh, at least one of these double bonds right here, the cursor is, and that one double bond will make it bend. So these are much more difficult to stack on top of one another evenly. So when these are at room temperature, these are liquid. They're like olive oil, canola oil, and so on. So saturated animal sources, not healthy, all single carbon bonds. Unsaturated are from plant sources. There's at least one double bond, which makes them bend, and they're going to be liquid at room temperature. All right, uh, lipid use. Uh, lipids in foods are found in phospholipids, uh, cholesterol, and like we mentioned before, more commonly triglycerides. Lipids mainly will supply and also store energy. And if you compare uh, fats versus carbs or proteins, uh, when you compare them gram for gram, you actually get more energy from fats than you do carbohydrates or proteins. Even though carbs are the most uh, obvious source of energy, but if you compare them gram for gram, fats give you much more of an energy uh, return. All right, there are some uh, fatty acids that the liver can't convert from one to another. So these are going to be called essential fatty acids. And these are needed to make the phospholipids of the cell membranes. An example that we'll go over, and there are more, but this is the one that I want you to be familiar with, uh, linoleic acid. So this is an essential fatty acid. All right, next we'll talk about uh, lipoproteins. Uh, lipids will sometimes combine with proteins, forming uh, the combination of lipoproteins, which you know, makes sense. You know, lipoproteins, lipids, and proteins. 
and these are classified by how dense they are, and there are uh, three classifications. And it's key, key to remember that proteins are much more dense than lipids. Uh, the first one, VLDL, very low density lipoprotein. These will have a very low protein and a high, high amount of triglycerides. That's why it's a low density or very low density. Uh, next one, uh, LDL, low density lipoprotein. Again, lower amount of protein, but a high cholesterol content. This is your bad cholesterol, the LDL. This you want to be as low as possible in your diet. And that's the opposite from this one. This is the one that you want a lot of, HDL, the good cholesterol, high density lipoprotein, high protein and low uh, fat content. So these are really, really low proteins, that's a little bit better, really, really high proteins. So this is what you want, that's bad, and this is really bad. So good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. All right, here's an example. Uh, these green things look you know, kind of like pickles, uh, represent the proteins, and the uh, orange, burnt orange color are the cholesterol. High density lipoprotein, the good cholesterol, much more protein amounts than uh, cholesterol, so it'll be much heavier in density, which is what you want. And the opposite of that, the bad cholesterol, low density lipoprotein. In this example, only one unit of uh, protein and a lot more cholesterol. Low protein, high fat. This is unhealthy. Bad, good. All right, next we'll talk about uh, proteins. A large amount or large number of functions, uh, including building more protein, uh, enzymes, hormones, uh, supply energy, and many, many more. Uh, to supply this energy, proteins are broken down into the individual components, their amino acids. And when you break down a protein, this process is called deamination. And during this process of deamination, you produce a waste product called urea. And this urea is removed uh, by the kidneys and will end up in your urine. Our, uh, next, uh, protein sources. Foods that are rich in proteins include things like meats, and fish, and poultry, you know, cheese, eggs, milk, and many, many others. The body needs about 20 types of amino acids, but there are eight that the body can't make. So these are going to be called essential amino acids. All right, this I wanted to go over because a lot of people misuse this term over and over and over again. So I wanted to hopefully add some clarity to this. Uh, when we talk about calories, especially calories in food. Now the real definition of a calorie, it's a, it's a unit of heat. It's the amount of heat needed to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. But when you talk about uh, calories in food, what you're really talking about are kilocalories or 1,000 calories. So that's why food calories should be mentioned as either food calories or calories with a capital C. So when you talk about a calorie like in physics or in chemistry, we're talking about the real definition here. When you talk about calories in food, you're talking about actually kilocalories or food calories. So there's a very big difference here. Uh, next, we'll go into the uh, body mass index, or BMI. This is a mathematical way to assess a person's uh, weight while considering their height. Uh, there are uh, four classifications, uh, underweight, normal weight, overweight, and obese. Uh, people tend to misuse overweight and obese as they're, some people think they're interchangeable terms, and they are not. There are distinct differences between those two uh, terms. And there's a mathematical a calculation you can make. I won't have you learn how to do that, but I will give you figures. So if you are underweight, the, your BMI will be less than 18 and a half. Uh, normal weight, 18 and a half to 24.9. Overweight, 25 to 29.9. Anything over 30 is obese. There are categories beyond just regular obese. And here's an example. Uh, this is uh, my information. I'm six feet tall and I'm 175 pounds, give or take. So my BMI will be 23.7, which means I'm in the normal weight range. If I were to gain just 25 pounds and go up to 200 pounds, my BMI will go up to 27.1, which makes me overweight. Again, this is all based on your weight and your height. 
right, uh, vitamins. Uh, a lot of people will confuse vitamins and minerals, thinking that they're the same thing. They are not. There's one big key difference. Vitamins are organic compounds, which means they have carbon in them, other than the carbs, lipids, or proteins that are needed for uh, metabolic reactions. So vitamins are organic. And these are only needed in small amounts because vitamins can't be made by the body in any really usable amount. So the key, key here is vitamins are organic, which is different from minerals. Minerals are inorganic. They don't have carbon. That's a big difference there. And they're usually attracted uh, by plants from the soil surrounding that plant. And when we eat that plant source, then we get those minerals. And examples include calcium, phosphorus, potassium. But again, the big difference, vitamins are, are organic, minerals are inorganic. All right, well, that will conclude this chapter. Like I mentioned before, this is probably the shortest chapter in this course on uh, vitamins and minerals and uh, the biochemistry I really didn't want to get into, even though the book really gets into it. And if you have any questions, no, please ask or post them to the discussion board.